Great, thank you. Welcome, guys. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Second year. And uh, as been mentioned, we're going to focus on Martini this year. Last year, I've been here representing Gibson. It's a bar I opened two years ago. And this year, we try to focus on our signature drink and maybe showcase the drink as a Martini, which many bartenders would agree. It's a king of cocktail, classic Martini, gin, vodka, maybe, uh, lemon zest, maybe olive. But we try to showcase it today from the past, present, and maybe future as well, what we do in our bar. So first thing, I like to, try, uh, I like to speak about our concept. When you look on a Gibson as a bar, obviously our inspiration came from Gibson cocktail. Gibson cocktail is a gin martini and uh, used as a garnish pickled onion. Pickled onion is maybe something which made famous this cocktail, but also I would say kill this cocktail. If you go to many bars or you speak to many bartenders and you ask them, do you serve Gibson? Do your guest ordering the Gibson? Answer nine out of 10 would say no. Why is it no? And this, is, this really shows you how the ingredients can uh, influence and how we as a bartenders can influence the drink and either bring it up to the sun, to the sunlight, or actually bury it up completely. So when you, when you go to the bars, to maybe a classic or average bar or standard bar, and you order the Gibson, at least in, in, in London or maybe even other places when I travel, you will find these small silver onions, very acidic, very sharp, not big in a flavor. And this really shows you that if you order Gibson Martini and you get this couple or maybe three onions, you, you drink it, you taste it, it's not a drink you want it again. Now, it's not the fall of the, of the Gibson Martin, it's not the fall of drink itself, or other drinks, in fact, which has a similar story. But it's actually the fall as bartenders, if you, if you compare us with the chefs, that we use a bad ingredients, and therefore, we create a cocktails which doesn't, say go uh, that doesn't taste good. Hence, people won't have it again, right? So when we, when we open a bar called Gibson, obviously, the first aim we were looking for would be these onions. So the garnish for Gibson Martini. Our onions, we call them double pickled onions. So they, uh, they are double maturated, double pickling. Uh, what, we, what, what we mean by double pickling? One week, we maturate them in a balsamic vinegar, so they get nice, rich, sweet flavor of the balsamic. Second week, we rinse them, and we maturate them in a white wine vinegar with the pickling spices and vermouth. So you get sweetness, you get sharpness, you get pickling spices, so savory elements, and little kick from the vermouth. And therefore, the taste and the flavor is completely different than very acidic, sharp, white silver onion. This drink, just to give you an idea, in London, I don't know how many you sell, or if you make any, any Gibsons in Kiev, if it's popular. But any bar I was working in London, maybe we would sell one, two, three, maybe five Gibsons per year, maximum. Now, just to changing the ritual of Gibson Martini, swapping the, the garnish for our house-made onions, and we're selling it by about 20, 30, 40 Gibsons a day, okay? Still gin martini, still classic drink, but just to nail the dilution, the temperature of the drink, great garnish, people enjoy it. They would come back, have the same drink, or they would drink all night just the Gibson martinis, okay? So that's our onions, I brought some with, uh, with me. Following the concept of pickling, uh, we try to use the savory element, the pickling element, through the all other menu. So if you come, if you visit us in a Gibson, and you look in a cocktail menu, most of the drink, 80, 90% of the drinks, has some kind of savory element. When I say savory, maybe in Asia, savory you would refer as uh, umami. Savory is a strong flavor which, uh, or umami, if you want to translate it, you can think of tomato, cheese, seaweed, salt, smoke, this kind of flavor. Okay, so that's savory. Again, it's something which is very popular, very trendy, past two, three years uh, within a kitchen, within, uh, by chefs, but maybe wasn't that popular by, uh, by bars, you know? So when I'm doing these trainings, when I travel and I go to different countries, you see Mediterranean countries, uh, they don't really use much savory. If you go Nordic countries, Scandinavia, uh, uh, Eastern Europe, savory, it's more common because we be pickling for, for years. UK as well, pickling is a strong, part of the culture, but definitely south, southern hot countries, you don't see pickling so much or savory at all, you know? So I think it's a new flavor for cocktail bars as well, and it's something which you can contribute to your menus and make some drinks a little bit stand out. So how do we pickling first? I just want to quickly show you uh, a basic recipe of pickling, because when I speak to the bartenders and I ask them, guys, do you pickle, do you preserve, do you season your cocktails or your ingredients? 
uh, in your bars, everybody uh, give me a big eyes and they say, wow, pickling is something very complex. Maybe it's a semi-fermentation, full fermentation. So bartenders are a little bit scared of pickling, right? But pickling can be something very simple. You can do even a fast pickle. If you go jar like these guys, a lot of kitchens, a lot of chefs making something uh, uh, fast within 24, 48 hours as a pickling. They, they just use it as a uh, flavoring, you know, so the quick pickle, quick seasonal pickle, which if you think of maybe vegetable or fruit, which doesn't have full flavor and you just want to give some flavor, savory notes, you can make a pickle for in the morning for the evening, right? So think of maybe baby carrot, uh, uh, maybe a pineapple or melon, which is not in a season and you want to give it a flavor before the service, this would be the way, yeah? So how do we pickle, guys? What do you need if you want to make a pickle? You see, it's all natural, very simple. Uh, and you can do right now in your bars, if you go back to your bar, very likely you got the ingredients, you can make a pickle. How do we make a pickle, guys? You need a, a jar, which you can seal, yeah? Pickling spices, that's what give you flavor. Depends on the country, there is a different uh, blend of pickling spices. If you look in this, uh, in this glass, these are standard uh, European style of uh, pickling spices. So blend of mustard seeds, fennel, anise, dill, uh, peppercorn. Uh, that's, that's the spices which give always when you, when you buy pickles, for example, these are the industrial ones. When you look on the bottom of the jar, there is a bit of spices. That's what gives a flavor, savory flavor to it. Yeah? So bottom of the jar, pickling spices. We need to sweeten it up. So a bit sugar. Salt for flavor, but also as a preservative element. More you put, guys, obviously your pickle become more salty, but also it preserves for longer. So if you're making your pickle not as a flavor agent, but if you're making your pickle as a preservative element, more salt and more vinegar, okay? Vinegar. It's there for acidity, but also that's what preserves your pickle, okay? So obviously it could be from a simple, basic cider wine vinegar to something more complex, maybe aged or fruity vinegars, yeah? Sometimes people ask me, what's the recipe, how much? And I try to ask and I look, look for the recipe and I spoke with one, two, three Michelin star chef to find out the best recipe for pickle. Eventually nobody really answered me. They all start laughing and they say, listen, this is just a pickle. It does not matter. It depends on your fruit, of your ingredients. You just balance sweet, sour, salty, savory, as you like. Obviously, if you're looking for long-term pickle, if you want to pickle it and preserve it for three, six, nine months, one year, more vinegar and more salt require. Okay? So we have this. Uh, we've got salt, sugar, pickling spices, vinegar. What is missing is our ingredients. In this case, I'm pickling green strawberries just so you see the pickle doesn't always need to be only gherkin. And something to finish, we need the water. So always try to fill your jar to the very top, so less air in, longer you can preserve it. Now we would close and seal the jar. And what you need to do, guys, you need to cook it in a water bath. So if you just put like this on a shelf, obviously nothing gonna happen. It start probably fermenting, very likely. So what you need to do, you put your pickle, your jars under the lid in a water bath and you cook between 10 to 15 minutes. Longer you cook, better, but also don't forget, uh, your ingredients can get softer. Yeah? They can become meshy. So 10 to 15 minutes, done, put on a shelf, doesn't, need, uh, doesn't require fridge and you can keep it three to six months easily, okay? If you want just a quick pickle, open it at night and you get nice seasoning to your ingredients, okay? So this will be the house pickle. This is how easy you can make a pickle, guys. You see, so it's nothing, nothing uh, complex. It's nothing that bartenders really want. Wow, if, uh, if I ask them and if I go to different bars, guys, you're pickling something on there, everybody's a bit scared of it. Very simple as this. Guys, I'm gonna make you Gibson Martini, so you see how we serve the Martini. A uh, chunk of ice, please, Tony. Ah, there he So, as I said, Martini is actually a very simple cocktail. This is the classic Gibson. Where can we be as a bartender can make mistakes, guys? When you make a Martini. Many bartenders, when, when we're gonna make a perfect Martini, when I ask them what's the ingredients, bartenders start telling you gin, vermouth, occasionally vodka. Some bartenders will tell you make be bitters. What bartenders need to always keep on mind, guys? Martini has two more ingredients, yeah? The two more ingredients which are extremely essential for each martini is the temperature and dilution. 
So if the drink is over chill or under chill, or if it's over diluted or under diluted, that's another two very important ingredients. It's the same like if you're making a steak and uh, you got best steak you can get, best meat, but you overcook it or you undercook it, it's the same way, okay? So, Gibson Martini is not so dry as a very dry or bone dry or naked Martini. The ratio is generally one to five, one to six. What we do with our vermouth, if you look inside, you see we're putting three more bar spoons of those pickling spices which I put in a jar, also in our vermouth. So the vermouth get extra savory notes. So we stir with a double frozen ice, and we always taste our martini to make sure. The martini, as a result, if, if people ask me, okay, when is the martini ready? How many times do I need to stir? how many rotation or for how long. Eventually, I would always say, listen, this depends on your product you're using, depends on the temperature of the ice. So the best is to try the martini, okay? The best is to taste it and realize how well is balanced the drink. So when you taste the perfect martini, should be very chilled, yet you still should feel the flavor of the, of the product. Yeah? So if I know this is my gin, I want to feel the flavor of it, yet it's nice and smooth. I, I'm not getting the hushiness, the sharpness of the alcohol in a throw, right? But still should not be so chilled that you only get, you know, it's almost the, uh, the idea of taking a red wine, rich burgundy wine, and you put it in a freezer, right? So you, it's, it's gonna be smooth to drink, but you're closing all the flavors. So very similar way when you make martini, I want to taste the flavors, yet enjoy it. Okay, has to be smooth and drinkable. And that's a craft and skill of the martini and the bartender, right? So this is the Gibson martini, guys. I'll show you the ritual, how we serve it, all our martinis. Once it's ready to go, we're using these glasses. So I don't have a freezer here, our glasses we always keep in a freezer, so what we did, we just chilled them with the dry ice. So very cold glass, this glass, uh, um, they're customizing for us, it's a nickel-plated glass. So eventually, these glasses are only used for martinis, they get very cold in a freezer, yet, thanks to the nickel, you're not getting the metallic taste like uh, you would get me oxidized metallic taste, you would get from brass or copper or silver. So actually, it's nice and cold, but doesn't give you a secondary flavor, okay? So Gibson Martini, we've got a little side bowl. We're always putting two onions on the side and one inside. The one inside we always recommend, so whoever is serving you the Gibson Martini, either your waiter or bartender, we always talk to the guests. The one inside we recommend to have as a last. So it's actually exchange and macerate flavor within the drink and all, also that onion get a little bit drunk from, from, the, from the martini, and you start with your two onions over here. So first two onions, it's kind of refreshing your palate, the acidity of it, and then you finish with the last one. So this will be the Gibson. All our martinis we serve with the Parmesan on the side. So when you look at it, you will get a martini, you will get extra garnish on the side. Why Parmesan? It's a rich cheese in a fat yet mild in a flavor. So with all martinis, maybe we got 12, 13 each year on the menu, all martinis are a little bit alcoholic. After a few sips, maybe when the martini is getting warmer, you get a little kick of alcohol. Therefore, we always propose a parmesan. After a few sips, when you get this alcoholic kick, the parmesan, the, the, the fattiness, mild, mildly down, okay? So that's how we do that. And always on the side, jar of pickles. So I just brought these jars. You see different varieties. Uh, it's actually beautifully to showcase how the pickles were treated 100, 150 years ago. You know, this, this is the jar for pickles around 1905. Uh, uh, okay, so 100 years ago, if you order pickles or you've been giving a pickles in a restaurant or grand hotels, this would be the, the jar you get, you know. If you, if you buy pickles today, this is the jar you got today, you know. So that just shows you how the preserve, how the pickles were treated 100 years ago. So actually it was a luxury item, okay? So the martini comes like this. 
different pickled vegetable to refresh your palate, acidity, vinegary flavor, refresh your palate, martini, and cheese to mild the alcoholic uh, taste to it. Yeah, so this is a classic Gibson martini, simple drink, but if you can taste it later, if it's still not warm, you see the flavor should be recognizable, yet delicate, and the pickles next to it actually give you nice juicy flavor. That's the Gibson, guys. We continue uh, age Gibson, please. So I brought few variation, as I said, from past, present to future. These are the H Gibson Martini. What we do, we got several barrels like this in a bar. Those barrels being washed with the balsamic vinegar from Modena for six months. And then we aged. Gibson Martini in. So what does it give you? The classic Gibson Martini when it comes to barrel, which previously been rinsed with a balsamic vinegar, you don't get direct flavor of balsamic, but you still get some aftertaste from, from the wood. So you get nice sweetness from the wood, yet you get beautiful acidity, fresh acidity from the vinegar, okay? This was inspired by uh, aging the balsamic vinegar. If you go to Modena, and if you look at the very old balsamics, 5, 10, 15, 25 years, they all aged in a small barrels, okay? So that was the inspiration to take, uh, to take a Gibson savory martini and age it so you don't get just sweetness, woodiness, but actually nice, fresh acidity. So how do we serve H. Gibson? Using a different glass. So we find the marble. It's still all our drinks are martini, so we still want to keep that DNA, even if they have some new ideas in it. Uh, but maybe the garnish or the serve change in order to give you a little bit different experience, right? So how do we serve this one? This is a marble glass, so chilled marble glass. Work very well. with the woody notes. On the side, we change the onions a bit here, so you see these are the ribs from the barrel, so we're reusing them when the barrels get too old, maybe when the barrel breaks. We keep this as a side plate, so we take three onions, and with this woody yet acidic flavor, what we find very interesting is a roasty, smoky, and truffle flavor. So we spray some truffle oil on the top. And we roast them on the spot. So you get this fresh hint. The oil caramelized within the onion, so that's quite nice. And you get this nice, smoky, roasty flavor to them as well. So we still want to have a DNA of Gibson because if somebody is making it to you or proposing this, it's still based on a Gibson. Yet here, you can think almost the woodiness, you can almost think it's a, it's a, uh, it's a combination of martini and uh, something like old fashioned, you know, you get this rich, woody, complex flavor to it. So three smoky, roasty truffle onions on the top, like this. We would put zest on the side, so it come to you this way. Then you use the barrel you put on the side, you can eat and have a sip. So that acidity and truffle oil give quite a different experience. So that's a X balsamic H. Gibson. Next one, we create a martini for uh, dry martini lovers. So if people come and they ask us for dry martini or uh, bone dry or naked martini, this would be the variation. We call it Martini a la Martin Ragged. So it's actually based on very old recipe. And the dryness comes from two ingredients. One is a gin infused with a sea herb. So when you look here, we're using up to four, five, depends of season, sea herbs. So the, Tony just holding them. Uh, yeah, you can, you can point out. So sea herbs like a sea fennel, oyster leaves, sea purslane, uh, sea rosemary, salty fingers. Um, and nasturtium flowers. So this is something between, if you think of, of those herbs as an origin, fennel, uh, oregano, rosemary, 
and you would maybe combine it with a sea, uh, seaweed, okay? So salty, savory flavor to it. So fresh herbs, four or five of them, for a couple days uh, within the spirit. Uh, sea spray. This is smoke salt sea spray. So the smokiness and saltiness give us nice savory finish to it. Seagrass gin. And just hint of them. So again, if people come and they just, they prefer and they drink a very dry, bone dry or naked martinis, these are our suggestion. Just to show you that we try to have a variation of all of them, even if it's naked martini or dirty martini or, or aged martinis. But maybe you just switch or adjust a couple ingredients to get your identity, your, your unique flavor to it. Glass, we're using the uh, bubble glass, bubble coupette. Glass for this martini, not sure if you can see it right now, but it's this double wall glass. So back in the days, you could see these glasses coming out on the market uh, seven, eight, nine years ago. That used to be, uh, th this double wall glass has been used mainly for hot drinks back in the days. So you could see a uh, rock glass or, or a highball glass, which obviously this double wall prevent you to burn yourself. So in the same way, now we've got, you see the champagne glass or the coupe like this. Actually the same idea, but work all the way around. If you keep them cold, if you keep them in a the freezer, they keep the drink cold for longer. So actually quite nice for keeping your martinis cold longer. So very dry sea influenced martini. The garnish in here, you see again the garnish or the decoration should be a part of ingredients or element of the drink where, where you suggest or you propose to your guest how to finish the drink or you showcase what's inside. What we use is a different pickles. So this little sea shall become a stent. So again, depends on seasonality, we always try to propose four or five uh, no, olives. No? Ah, olives here. Yeah. Four or five different pickles, where as people are going to have one or two sips and always drink it or eat it with a different, different pickle, eventually uh, influence your taste, you know? So it depends what you put on the top. Uh, having a one bite, chew on it, drink it, the drink change as well. So think of the garnish of it as well. Rim. We take a seaweed, so it's a perfect example of, uh, of savoriness. We cut a little stripe, which you can actually call a seaweed lip or seaweed crusta or seaweed belt, however you like to name it. You see, this would be something which you normally uh, roll the sushi in. Just make it a slightly wet. And as soon as it's wet, very easy, guys, we can stick it to the wall like this. Just halfway of the glass, so as people touch it with the lips, you get this extra sea influence taste to it. On the top, blend of the sea grasses. So again, our guest can see what's inside, what was the infusion. Of course, it's edible, so it gives a nice, nice touch to the drink, to it, okay? So that's Martini a la Martin Rugged, and that would be our take on dry Martini, or very dry Martini. <laughs> Next one, guys, is our take on, uh, on a dirty Martini. I'm not sure how you making dirty Martinis in your bars. You know, bartenders normally use a, uh, olive, uh, uh, olive brine, or some bartenders would muddle olives. So we try to use something different. In this case, we use 
pink peppercorn, you know, so uh, these are pickled, pickled uh, pink and green peppercorn, so we get still this briny, very rich, briny, savory flavor, beautiful. Maybe the olive is a little bit straight, a bit flat flavor. That's why I prefer to use uh, pepper, because you get also nice heat, spicy to it, okay? What we do with this drink, I'm just gonna showcase you here. We call it actually sea sparkle. So we think of uh, dirty martini. For the grassiness, we're using a bit of Zubrovka. Gin. Since, as the name suggests already, sea sparkle, we try to make it somehow sparkly, you know? So we would propose it to you and we would suggest this as a substitute for dirty martini, but that sparkling element give a life to the drink, you know? And of course, sparkle, or in this case, fizziness, sparkliness, is something which you don't see commonly in a martini, right? Because if you want to make your martini fizzy, what would you do? Put a soda water inside, tonic water, champagne, you know, it's not martini anymore. So we were thinking how we can make martini fizzy, because the fizz is eventually ingredients. The fizz sparkle open the flavors, yeah? It's a flavor enhancer, right? So we were thinking one martini on the menu would be great to have a fizzy. So, uh, as I said, uh, grassy vodka, gin, electric bitters, so these are bitters uh, based on bus buttons, so give you electrifying sensation, again, flavor enhancer, sake, <clears throat> savory element, and now, I already pre-made before, but I'll show you here, we're using these soda stream bottles, so once we make this in the morning, we pour in, and we charge the martini. So you see no soda, no champagne, no, no uh, tonic water, but we charge directly in these bottles with the dry ice, okay? So this is what's gonna happen. You see, always use, if you're gonna do it, please be very careful because this, if you overcharge it, it might explode. So I always say, guys, if you want to follow this method, be, uh, be very careful and never use glass or metal bottles because actually it, it become explosive, yeah? So these bottles has space to expand in case, and if you're char charging, overcharging, you can always just release yeah, to control the gas. Uh, this is how we make all our fizzy drinks, and this is how you make your martini fizzy. So no extra dilution, no other ingredients. Once you charge it, we chill it in a fridge freezer. When you order the drink, we serve directly in your, in your glass, okay? You should wait until obviously dries it dissolve, but we might not have the time. So I just strain it without the dry ice. So when it's ordered, we can directly take almost like a bottle of champagne. We take it from the freezer and pour it in a glass. So you get beautiful fizz, sparkle on your tongue. And that pepperiness, give you a little bit more complexity and more interesting flavor than, um, than maybe olive. How do we serve it, guys? We take this, because there is pepper inside, but to put the pepper as a garnish is a little bit uh, too spicy, too powerful. So we find this balsamic caviar. Yeah, you see, sea sparkle, it looks like It has connection with the sea. So we put little balsamic caviar, which again has connection with, uh, with our concept, savory element. So that caviar can sit in and slowly dissolve, slowly become more rich, sweet, and sour. Or people can take it and actually eat it as a garnish. Okay, we have that. <coughs> uh, electric flower, Tony? Hmm? Oh, there we go. And one fresh electric flower, since this is sparkle for, if you bite it, you get this extra kick of electricity directly on your tongue. So that's to start with, and the balsamic to finish, almost like a starter and dessert. Okay, so that's a sea sparkle. So this is from very classic to maybe what we're doing right now and maybe a future of the martinis, which I like to showcase, we do a chili one. We call it the hottest or most spicy martini 
uh, the, the hottest martini in the world with zero heat. Okay, so what I brought with me here, this is gin, which is really still, uh, it's really still with the three hottest peppers in the world. Yeah, so if you look on the three hottest pepper in the world, they will spread Carolina Raper uh, and uh, uh, Scorpion of Trinidad. Just to give you an idea, if you measure heat of the chili, Tabasco has 10,000 scoviles. These peppers, which I'm uh, talking about, got between 2.5 to 7.5 million of scoviles. So 250 to, uh, uh, up to 750 times of Tabasco. Okay? What we do, we take the gin, we macerate for 72 hours for three days. We macerate the peppers inside. And after three days, it's red, it's so spicy, you're not able even to touch it. When I put it on my skin, it's literally burning. So we need to use the gloves, you need to use the, uh, the glasses so it doesn't go to your eyes. So it would be undrinkable. You would never be able to drink this hottest peppers, Martin. You know, after first sip, you're probably going to be hospitalized. But what we do, we redistill that martini. And when you redistill something, when you use rota vapor or the pot still, physically, through the, rot, uh, th through the distillation, the heat cannot go through, right? So that's, all, that's one of the elements of distillation where you get all the flavors through, all the peppers flavors you get through are part of spice, okay? So that's when it's come very interesting because people now can drink the hottest martin in the world with zero heat. So you can actually taste the pepper flavors, but with zero heat, okay? So that's... That's what we call kind of future martinis, where we need to use the rota vapor, but make it very interesting. What we put in this martini is the chili gin, so three days, three hottest peppers. I keep half here, so when you finish, you can try, guys. When we finish, you can just try itself. A uh, combination of the other ingredients, we were still thinking it's a pepper, it's chili. So what works very, uh, well with chili, bit of sweetness. So in this case, actually, no dry vermouth, but sweet red vermouth. Uh, Mozart. Bit of dry cacao uh, spirit, so this is Austrian Mozart. So the chocolate spirit, literally really still chocolate spirit. So chocolate chili goes well together. Uh, beeswax, honey chili goes well together as well. But we didn't want to put honey directly, because if you put honey, obviously it's not really martin anymore. You get a lot of sweetness from that. So what we do, we just do this quick fat wash, if you want to say, of beeswax directly in your, in your shaker. And as you know, when the beeswax, when the wax hits the liquid, as you rotate a bit, it's solidified again. So what you get, what you extracted is a, is, is a honey flavor, yet zero sweetness, okay? Because of a lot of essential oils, we're rolling this martini in order to open the flavor. Ready to serve. How we serve it as it not as cold as it should be. So we serve in this case on a little chunk of ice. So this is a little bit pinkish. It's not from the spirit, it's from the secondary ingredients, from the vermouth. So you get this beautiful pinky color. Again, we finish it with a zest. We serve it a few times and the people, you know, it's very funny when you're gonna have a, if you're gonna have a chance to have a sip, you will see what I mean. When you have a first sip, your brain got so many peppery flavor that your brain is telling you, wow, now the spice is gonna come because your brain can acknowledge the pepper but there is zero heat, so the heat, the spice never comes, so that's very funny. You know, when, when we serve it first few days, first few weeks, we got this feedback like, wow, it's nice, I, I can feel all the flavors of the pepper, but now I'm missing a little bit of heat because actually it should be spicy, but it's not spicy at all. Therefore, we introduce this uh, pepper as a garnish, 
This is a padron pepper, Spanish padron pepper. If you go to Spanish restaurants, you see the lot as a part of tapas, you know. So very common in Spain. Mostly they always grilled, you know. So what we do, we try to kind of uh, quickly grill it because you get nice smoky roasty aroma out of it. So we put it like this. So you get nice smoky roasty aroma. But these peppers, nine out of three times, they're super sweet. They're never really roasty or peppery or hot. Okay, so that's, that's the fresh real pepper which we give to our guests uh, as a garnish. And if they're missing a bit of this real pepper flavor, they got this on the side. How do we finish it? Honeycomb and chili bears on the side. As I said, this is more the future of the martini, more modern. So here we swapping the classic garnish of olive or zest or pickle for something new. Why we using the honeycomb? Chili and honey is a perfect combination. So we're using honeycomb because the honeycomb contain a bit of real wax. Yeah? So as you, as you give this to your guest, what's going to happen as they chew on it, it's become a natural honey chewing gum. So people, your guest, chewing, keep chewing for five, seven, ten minutes, and they're releasing slowly the honey flavor. Goes perfectly with the drink. On the top, bit of cheeky bears, you know, so these are fairy, fairy cheeky bears. It's, it's the gimmick of the drink, you know, so they look as a gummy bears, yet they are really hot. So this is the hot element, if you have it, it's a little bit of a Russian roulette there, you know, so some of them are very hot, some of them are not hot at all, you know, so eventually it's up to people to pick and have the fun part of it and try to get the mild or more hot ones, okay? So this we call Kiss of Scorpion, the hottest martini with zero heat. Mm -hmm. Great, guys. One more martini, which is quite strong connected to British culture, British flavor. We try to be inspired with a typical dessert in England, strawberries and cream. Yet, try not to make it cheesy. We, we, we still, all our martinis, we try to keep in a DNA of martinis. So even if it's different glass or different garnish, but still, we want to keep them as a martini. So if you have a sip, even if it's fizzy, even if it's red in color, they still should be a martini. So if I say strawberry and cream, we still trying to keep it as a classic martini with a different flavor, rather than make a, 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 a fancy martini where you're putting a strawberry liquor, strawberry syrup, strawberry puree, you shake it, and that's what you call martini, right? So how do we make a strawberry and cream uh, martini? We take this strawberry vodka, so this naturally uh, fermented and redistilled 50 ABV Scottish strawberry vodka, and we put some raspberry leaves in it. So you get nice, boozy, but actually extra kick. It's 50 ABV of uh, uh, strawberry vodka. They produce everything in a farm. We mix it with a gin as well, so you get that fruitiness from there, but it's still a gin martini. In fact, strawberries and cream go very well with the orange and cacao, so what we're doing, these are pure cacao nips. We roast them or we activate them, if you want to say, right on a spot. So almost idea of a coffee beans. Touch of orange liquor. And this is our new element, which is milk, wash milk fermented vermouth. So we're taking a vermouth, a rosé vermouth, we put a milk inside, and we're using a centrifuge machine. So it's a machine which's spinning for 20 minutes very fast, and because of full-fed milk, what's happened, the milk separates on a wall, and you get your milk wash vermouth. So this is where we get a strawberry from the vodka and milkiness from the full fat, fresh milk, uh, fat washed uh, vermouth, okay? So when you taste it, it's still only alcohol. It should be nice, boozy, even dry, I would say. Just a little bit of sweetness on the egg. 
Yeah, it is. But you definitely get this milky and strawberry flavor of the strawberry vodka and milky, milky wash centrifuge vermouth. So for this, you need equipment. If you're using a centrifuge, it's very easy. When you put a milk or any kind of dairy product, a vermouth, uh, it takes 15 to 20 minutes, the job is done. If you're not using centrifuge, uh, you can use a traditional way of, of um, separating uh, milk dairy products. What do you need to do, guys? You take a milk, you put in a vermouth, lemon juice or citric juice, so lemon or lime juice, put in a fridge overnight, and the acidity will separate the milk. And then you double strain it through coffee filter. So that would be the traditional way. How do we finish the drink? We take a glass. Now the garnish is something more unusual, more modern. So what we take, you see firstly we're pickling the strawberries, so green strawberries pickles, so strawberry and cream, therefore the garnish is a pickled green strawberries. So they look like a strawberries, but when you eat it, you will see they savory, Similar way like the onions, yeah? so savory pickled strawberries. What we take here? Strawberries go very well with the balsamic and, uh, and the meringue. So we take the balsamic glaze or cream, if you like to say, and we put on a rim. So these glazes obviously uh, can be used as a crust or rim on your glass. Glaze you can already buy, thicken, or you can make your glaze. Glaze is very simple because it's a liquid which means thickened by gelatin or sugar. Yeah? So if you, if you can't buy it or if you, if you can't find what you're looking for, you can create glaze very easily. All what you need to do, take a spirit, liquid, you name it, juice, whatever you want, guys, and just reduce it with the sugar or thicken it with the gelatin, xanthana gum or carrageen gum. Okay? So you see we put some meringue. So you get this nice crunch, and you get a bit acidity from, uh, from the vinegar, and crunch and sweetness from meringue, which is egg white and sugar. So we got that. Chunk of layer again. So this Martin, you see, we don't stir that well. They're not as boozy as the first couple Martinis, yet we're serving them over chunk of ice. We do this. So you see that rosa vermouth, milk wash give you this beautiful milky look like uh, color. We put some edible flour on the top. And finish it on the side with uh, several pickled strawberries. For the Savory touch. So what we recommend here, people actually, uh, the vinegar, Tony, vinegar glaze. Mm -hmm. We finish the strawberry with the vinegar glaze as well. Just like this, thanks. So you see from the past, the very classic making simple Gibson Martini with the t focusing on temperature dilution, the serve you do to a modern style, maybe the hottest martini with zero heat, maybe centrifuge, milk cream vermouth. That's a few examples, obviously, on the menu we got more. But you see where even a classic or king of cocktail as a martini can have such a variation from very simple to more complex modern version. But please always keep on mind, uh, it, it's, it's a martini, so after you have one or two sips, they still should keep and pay a respect to the DNA where the martini is coming from. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for your time. I hope to see you next time. Thank you.